I think the most wonderful part of collecting Northwest artists was the fact that we were able to get to know a lot of them. Many, of course, are sadly gone by now, but uh, we did get to know a lot of the people who were, we were collecting, and I think that brought a special uh, something to having their work at our home. I'm Lucy Prusan. I'm Herb Prusan. Herb and I were delighted to be able to gift some of our favorite works to BEMA. We uh, enjoy going there. We have a place at Port Ludlow, so we're on, on the ferry frequently, and we come up the hill and enjoy the museum. My dad was an art student, and he painted a lot, but did not do so professionally. But it, we had paintings around our house growing up, and then as soon as we were married, we wanted to start our own collection, and that, that's how it began, and we concentrated on the Northwest. I don't think we initially set out to do that, but we realized that we loved collecting. I think it was a matter of supporting local artists as well as affordability. <laughs> we bought artists that we liked and that we felt did reasonably good work and were interesting, but once in a while we were asked f to lend these works to local museums, and so then it became a collection. Yes. I think Lucy was looking at the subject matter and, and, and the color in that. I was looking more for, for the quality of the work, how, how uh, the materials were utilized. The most important thing for me was everything had to have a bit of whimsy about it. <laughs> I didn't want anything to be too serious. Most of our work, have, not everything, but a lot of it has a lot of whimsy about it. Over the years, our attitude, or my attitude towards the works haven't changed that much, but the works have changed and the styles have changed. And so we've had to look I've had to look more seriously for works that fit my interests or the way in which we were thinking of acquiring something. But uh, it definitely was not with a financial or, or uh, appreciation uh, concept in mind. That was not part of it at all. So we're very pleased to be able to fill in at different collections works that they, artists that they might not have in depth and also be able to be able to trace the artist's progression over time with works from different stages of his or her career. We miss those pieces of art, but on the other hand, we can go visit them. And on the third hand, we have about 250 works. If we donate 12 or 15 a year, we've got years to go. <laughs> okay. I will miss some of the pieces, especially the Lauren Grossman hide body. <laughs> I'm sorry that no one will be able to peek inside <laughs> to see who's in there. <laughs> I will miss the sculptural piece, uh, William Cumming, Old Man on the Market, because that was a piece that would sit there and I could pick it up and say, this is a really lovely work. It has a heft to it, and yet and it has the Old Man of the Market feeling. We do miss the works that are, that are gone, yeah. and we do like to live with a lot of art. Yeah, they become your friends, so much a part of your everyday environment. And I, you know, we feel very lucky we've been able to purchase and acquire so many things that we like. We feel it was a great privilege. That's why we're, we're pleased to be supportive of, of BIMA. And, and with being a, a meeting place on the island, which has been very, very important in supporting the artists of the area. I think we're very proud of having supported so many 
local artists. Well, we've also helped to stimulate the galleries to show more art and and to make events and develop uh, relationships with, with collectors. I hope it will inspire people to buy something they like and whether it fits in with the decor or not. <laughs> If we like something, we'll find a spot for it in our house. And I don't think we ever said, let's build a collection. We, it, it just sort of developed, you know. If people don't support artists, they can't make a living, they'll have to do something else. And we'll be all be the poorer for it. <laughs>